All right, the last alpha I want to show you how to make is more of a sculpted alpha, okay? It's using all the combinations of everything we've learned so far to produce an alpha. The way I produce this is usually do a polygon plane. I'll scale in and I'll start to use some of the other tools available to me. Now we haven't really covered much of these tools so I'm just going to say that they are there and we're going to be covering them but for right now just kind of follow along and do as I do okay now uh, let's say for instance how about I just stick with a standard brush that way we're not going outside the bounds just yet okay I'm gonna only use one extra brush here to produce this alpha Okay, first off, I'm just going to add some bumps in here. And this is just Z add on, RGB intens or the Z intensity is 25, and it doesn't matter if the RGB is on or not. I want to stress that, you know, when you when you create things in ZBrush, um not everything's a vampire, a monster, a fairy, or anything else. You know, I would say those are those are all fun and good to make, but really use your imagination on some things. And when you're when you're dealing with brushes, that's it's a skill in itself sometimes to make some really, really nice brushes. Okay, so what I did is this. I made some higher res detail on here. And I'm going to use one extra brush, and I promise to go over it a little bit later on how to use it more efficiently. It is called the Clip Curve Brush. Okay. Okay, the way this works. And let me make sure that actually activated. Ah, oh, there we go. Shift control keys. Okay. So with control shift held down, this new brush becomes active. So I can still be in the standard brush and standard all day long. And if I need to use the other brush, I hold shift and control. Okay. What this does is if I go from one end to the other, and you see how it's darker on top. You can see this shadow. Wherever it's dark, it's going to plateau those areas when I let go. Okay, good. So let's make that a little bit deeper. Good. Okay, now I can sculpt in those areas again. And I'm just producing something that looks interesting. It's not like I'm sitting here saying, well, I'm making brains or anything like that. It's just I want to get students used to creativity. I think it's one of those things that you're always, you're always thinking that if you launch a program and you see other people's work, that you have to do like work. Okay, so I can do that over and over and add more and more detail. In fact, I can use the other brushes that I made too. Um, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to add a little bit more as far as some abstract stuff in here.
And I love this brush and the fact that it crawls across different forms. Just like that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we can do this either two ways. We can grab it with the MRGZRB grabber, which is probably what I'm going to be using. Or I can do it the other way, which I can grab a document. Okay. Now this would equal uh, a very good workflow, but it won't produce a perfect square. So let me show you the other way, since we've already learned the other, that one. I go new document, no, document, and I'm going to make a 1024 by 1024 document. Resize it, zoom out, click and drag my thing out. Like that. Move it into position. Click back edit. I'm just going to scale it just a little bit so it takes up the full frame. Double clicking scale will make it so it scales perfectly, but it's got some rounded corners, so I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit more and then move it along. So this way, I guess I have a little bit more control over it being a square. Good. Now, uh, check back at it and go alpha. Grab document. Okay, so now I have something that looks like this. Good. So, let's try it out. Initialize ZBrush, yes. Make a plane. Launch our new doodle. Scale it up. And I can play around with the idea of what is this going to do? Is it going to produce some kind of uh, rock texture? Can I use it with drag rec? Does it need some radio fall off? You can see now that it's not so bad. You know what I mean? Because I produced this alpha, sure, but before it was just an abstract piece of crap. But now you can use it to make alien skin or anything else. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that, you know, you just got to be a little bit more open and start producing things that, you know, may not make sense at first, but try them out. I mean, what are you going to break something? That's a very cool alpha. Very cool. And it stacks very easy using the radio fall off. And there we go. Some kind of dino hide or alien symbionite skin. All right. And it's all good because you'll learn that anything that you call an alien in ZBrush justifies that something may not look exactly real, but you can justify it underneath the alien category. All right. That is the, or another way to produce alphas. So let's move on to the next video.